Our last speaker of the session will be Isabel Luson. So Isabel is uh, from the Catalan Institute of Re for Research and Advanced Studies. Uh, she leads the Archimboldo team there. And uh, Isabel has actually spent many years with George Sheldrick in Göttingen. And today she is also going to talk about uh, refinement using Shellex L that was developed in Göttingen. So please, Isabel. Thank you, Pavel. Can you see me? Can you see my screen? And can you yes. hear me? It's all right. Yes. Um, um, yes, uh, indeed, it is rather in the last century that uh, my work was involved in, in uh, uh, Shell Excel development uh, related matters along with, with other people. Um, but, uh, well, uh, thank you for, for the invitation to talk here and um, uh, I wish George was uh, in good health to be doing it himself. Um, in any case, I thought I'd bring here the uh, Shellex web in Göttingen because uh, it uh, changed a couple of years ago. So anyone checking the old one would not get any uh, information. And also because if you report any bugs on Shellex, you might want to include me in the email or, or send it uh, to me. I, uh, um, well, fixed the bug on Shellex cell. Uh, during this Christmas, so I've been <laughs> at least justified in, in telling about it today. Um, so I very fastly moved a slide in my talk, which uh, I had left for the end to address uh, the uh, um, subject prompted by Andrea. So this is actually uh, um, a slide from a talk of George Sheldrick from uh, um, I had looked um, for a more explicit statement that uh, in validation, the idea is that you leave part of the information out that you don't use at any point and you don't tell your model to use uh, this information to, to rate it and to evaluate it. And well, actually we are doing that in a very religious way about the R3. <laughs> Everybody would think it's high heresy to use the same data for refinement and for uh, in the test that you are using for, for R3. Uh, but with validation at the moment, it is becoming very, very entangled as, as Andrea was prompting. So yeah, I think we, we need to think also in, in new directions, um, not just is our model good, but what are the experimental data telling us? What is the experiment adding to a model that we could compute from Rosetta Fold or Alpha Fold, and uh, are the data just putting up with our model, or do they really prove uh, whatever is important in, in that structure? Anyway, yeah. Um, so, but, and on the other hand, uh, let me look back at the, uh, a uh, great talk that uh, Dale Tronroot was giving yesterday when he was describing the situation in the crystallographic cambric period and all the refinement problem programs that uh, coexisted in those days. So you could say that uh, Shell Excel was uh, uh, um, a um, survivor of uh, that time. Um, because uh, the first Shell Excel was written around uh, 1917 and released somewhat later. And it's uh, uh, easily the, the, well, at least two years ago before the pandemic, last time we checked, it was the most used uh, program in determinations of, of uh, chemical crystallography for, for small molecules. So, uh, well, uh, Shell Excel looks at atoms and it's uh, very general and flexible for any crystallographic uh, uh, question. So, there's particular things that you may want to be using it for, and these are the ones that I'm trying to highlight in this talk. So, of course, it's obviously space group general, but you can define your own scattering and input it as it had to do uh, to be done in those days to avoid storing all the unnecessary uh, information for lack of space, but not just X-ray, electron or neutron diffraction, but you could also refine against powder data with Shell Excel or lower data. You can um, estimate standard uncertainties for all variables uh, with some approximation for, for uh, planes. Um, you can address all kinds of uh, twinning, uh, 
meroidral, no meroidral, pseudo meroidral. Um, you can refine occupancies, but tied to in, in particular ways to make a, a physical sense, not just, um, for instance, um, model alternative uh, conformations uh, that, that, that are related for different parts of the st structure and handle complex uh, uh, multiple disorder. So, uh, as I say, Selexcel knows about atoms, so if you leave it to its own, it would come up with a, um, trying to define the chemistry that it is finding by setting up its own connectivity list, which of course may be altered, and in the case of a polypeptide, one would just uh, uh, um, have the expected connectivity for the uh, residues, but you can uh, interf uh, interfere in all of this by uh, defining additional bonds or, or freeing bonds or uh, setting up disorder. And I wanted to show an example uh, um, that's taken for something that's now textbook information. So the uh, mechanism in, in, in um, uh, uh, potassium uh, channels that uh, was originally thought to involve an alternation of uh, ions and water molecules but um, in a study where, where the crystallographic structure uh, contributed decisively was understood finally to be um, caused by direct neighboring uh, ions whose repulsion would contribute to, to the high um, 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 traversing rate through the, through the channel. Uh, so this, uh, that's a scenario where uh, describing the scattering and uh, of ion and possibly uh, water if they were sharing um, positions and uh, refining occupancies was uh, important and you can read about it here and I think Tim Grune has a tutorial uh, that, that uses this data. Uh, um, well, in those days when I uh, um, was joining the, the laboratory of George Sheldrick as a postdoc. It was when, when Shellex uh, uh, 93 had just been released and uh, Shellex 97 was being developed. And uh, Shellex 97 incorporated uh, refinement against uh, intensities. And uh, um, I went to a workshop in York when I learned that uh, this was uh, um, not useful for proteins because of the many other uh, errors that were uh, more important. But well, with time, everything gets better and uh, um, errors get lower and data get better. So for instance, using intensities has made big uh, impact in, in uh, uh, molecular replacement with the incorporation in, in phase of the targets in 2016. You know? So, um, and about twin refinement, um, I, well, Gerard was talking about uh, the, um, the, discussing the structure that uh, could be presenting uh, some twinning. Well, in Shell Excel, you could be refining at the same time against the different uh, lattices. And you can uh, flag in the, in the um, data file which intensities correspond to an overlap where you have integrated the sum of uh, the contribution of the uh, two domains for a non meroidral twin um, and which, um, in, in, in which uh, reflections correspond to measurement um, of an intensity derived from only one uh, of the domains in case uh, that they are separated enough or uh, at least can be dissected in the integration. Uh, I'm writing the least square targets like this, but uh, of course it's a two component uh, target function as, as uh, uh, Dave Road was uh, describing. Uh, in which one is optimizing the agreement with uh, for the experimental data as well as for the uh, deviations for the restraints to be to be uh, low. 
constraints and restraints. Um, well, that's uh, constraints uh, are um, leading to a lowering of uh, the number of parameters because, for instance, when you um, have two different uh, twin domains, the occupancies would require for the two just one parameter. It's either one domain or the other. Uh, so that's a constraint that several twin domains add up to one. Or uh, restraints just give you additional equations in your minimization. So it's not like removing uh, um, parameters, but rather like adding uh, as if you could add, uh, uh, well, observations or like adding reflections. And um, they are placed on a, uh, they are normalized to put them on a constant scale uh, across structures so that the uh, geometric terms can be given a weight that uh, uh, ha has been um, optimized empirically. Um, okay, not a lot to tell about residuals, um, except um, that I wanted to um, address that uh, F3, which is calculated same as R1, but on only um, the, the free data set, might have to large standard deviation to uh, support uh, judging small changes. And uh, especially in some cases, if you have a small set of data, um, uh, for instance, in neutron diffraction, because you have so many more parameters having to account also for the hydrogens and, and, and the deuterium. Um, then uh, if you want to lower this, uh, this standard deviation, you can calculate uh, air complete or um, air cross 50 as described in Tingrunes uh, work. And um, that would allow you to do several refinements in which you omit a much smaller number of reflections because you cannot afford to um, omit uh, your typical 5%. And uh, still combine the differences for all the omitted reflections in a, um, um, single figure of merit and uh, like this lower the, the standard deviation for, for this estimation. And uh, that's uh, one thing that can be accessed by the scripts that Tim Grune has in his uh, web page, but we are thinking of making it available easier to, to use through, for instance, the XDS GUI. Um, Although the standard uh, refinement would be conjugate gradient uh, um, for some purposes, you would need full matrix least square refinement, which uh, uh, is mainly for estimation of, of standard uncertainties would might be interesting. And uh, so here's the, uh, you can run all the refinement as usual, then include all the data in the last step because of, as you are not going to take any decision anymore, there's no need to, to omit a test data and uh, run one cycle of full matrix least square, which you could block out if, if uh, memory is an issue. And this is uh, an example of a structure of 1.7 Armstrong. Again, I remember that uh, uh, Lint and I and Dave Tronru laughed a lot at that time in, in 97, hearing me describe this at low, as low resolution. And uh, uh, it, it uh, shows, the, it can be fitted to uh, the Cruikshank's uh, um, estimation of, of uh, standard uncertainties. Um, so, Mm, positions for the lighter atoms, carbon, are of course uh, uh, poorer, uh, worse determined that than for uh, more electron rich uh, oxygen here. And um, uh, this, of course, uh, will tell you, um, well, assuming that your model is correct, it wouldn't tell you that something is uh, uh, wrong. 
Um, so if you want to do that calculation, you will have to remove restraints because that's for a, a much higher resolution structure at 0 0.92. The curves, if you uh, do this one cycle of this square refinement, uh, omitting the restraints or leaving them in, if you leave them in, you see that the bond length DSD uh, is, uh, describes an asymptote to the value at which you have restrained the structure. For solver correction, uh, something that's relatively new is the possibility of adding uh, structure factor contribution as an external file, for instance, generated with a uh, program uh, platoon for, for um, fronton spec for supramolecular chemistry, where the solvent may be composed by uh, much heavier uh, species, for instance, uh, dichloromethane or uh, um, uh, chloroform than the the molecules to be determined, so it gets a lot in the way. And uh, but it could be input for macromolecules for a bulk solvent correction. And um, um, five minutes remaining. You can refine against uh, X rays, neutron or electron, and here are the uh, restraints that uh, were derived by uh, Grüne, Tim Grüne et al. Um, for, for the hydrogen distances, uh, which is something that uh, Keitaro has already been uh, alluding to. Uh, and you can also describe uh, bone deformation with uh, uh, two Gaussians or uh, model long pairs for high resolution uh, refinement, but when you uh, don't have such high resolution that you could afford uh, full Hirschfeld refinement. Or, uh, so, that's, that's the citation for that. Incidentally, um, I remember that uh, Pavel Afonin was doing during his PhD with uh, Sasha Ursunsev uh, using Shellex uh, to, to model uh, uh, um, bond deformation uh, uh, density with uh, pseudo atoms. Uh, that, uh, that's you. Um, you can use this to generate input. I don't think there's an interface in CC before now from where you could run Shellex silk, but you can run it from the XDSG. You can inter it interacts uh, with CUT, and you can generate the uh, crystal um, coordinate input file with PDB twins from Anna Leuven, which doesn't generate restraints, so you might get them from the uh, grade server, which outputs uh, restraints in, in Shellex format. For the conversion of data, one word of caution, because um, I don't think the standard conversion from F2 empty set to various in CC before um, makes full use of the um, format to not truncate the dynamic range of the data. So really, the, and uh, we've had uh, with the conversos in Phoenix uh, problems uh, even recently that uh, uh, you, they truncate uh, uh, strong reflections. So best thing to use EM is empty set to HKL from Tingrune, which is in CCP4 as well. And uh, we are looking into restraints from ligands to because if you are using it within CCP4, you could just um, get, um, get them from the standard monomer library for most of the cases. So we are including uh, an addition to, to well, wrap around PDB to ins that will include into the ins that's formed uh, restraints from, from the monomer library. And um, going back to the place where we started, which was validation and also the prompt from Gerard Ricoin, can we do something more? Can we look at other things, even though validation and assessing the model is great? Well, we are looking into verification. For instance, uh, probing for ligands whether uh, the data are good enough to discriminate among sensible alternatives, because you find things like uh, in, in carefully calculated maps, like uh, pegs that end up being a fatty acid, and uh, um, it's happened to us as well in our in our own structures. So uh, two minutes remaining. That's it, I think. I that's well, a lot of people from the Sheldrick group. Uh, well, of course, George's uh, program, and uh, and then. Um, Regine Herstirmer for the twin, Tim Grüne for uh, the, the, the neutron work is his work and the air complete. Birger Dietrich was the person uh, doing the 
um, Lohan and Beat, uh, um, and Andrea Thorn, I uh, haven't mentioned her, uh, Rico Restraints, Thomas Schneider, doing, and, and MK and Stephanie, we were in those days with the first refinement of proteins with uh, Shellix. And that's my group. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Um, just time for one or two quick questions. So I'm, um, I'm handing over to Gary. Yes. I think there's one question in the on the uh, Slack uh, Saturday. Could you please define the high resolution limit necessary to observe lone pairs and bonding orbitals? Did you hear the well, you should, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm thinking. So I, well, mm, mm, rather than giving a number, it's always also a question of uh, data to parameter that one has, and uh, which is, uh, um, but uh, in any case, atomic resolution. That's, that's uh, atomic resolution, but uh, poorer resolution that one you need for charge density, for two, full, uh, fully parameterized charge density studies and multiple analysis. Yeah. Is that interesting the thing that they eh? uh, uh, bonding orbitals? Can you observe them at all? Well, I've uh, done very little with that, but actually, as I said, Pavel was using Shell XL during uh, his uh, PhD, and I'm sure he uh, uh, remembers. <laughs> <laughs> they, at least he and Sasha were saying that uh, they were. Uh, um, uh, they agree well for known systems with other with what you find with the full uh, Hirschfeld refinement or as I'm extremely interesting things that because there's a Feynman uh, uh, Hellman uh, uh, theorem that if you know electron density you know everything but you need you need to have a ex extremely accurate electron density not everything most of the forces but I think that what we should do is that we should move all remaining uh, the discussions to Slack. So, uh, and we should thank, well, I would like to thank all our uh, speakers and they gave very good, uh, good talk, excellent, insightful talks. But it was our fault that we are 10 minutes late. It's the uh, chairs fault, not speakers. Thank you.